each new video we be doing, I get like a, another piece of my <laughs> tattoo done. I wonder, any of our, I wonder if any of our fans can tell the difference. Because last time, last video I didn't have the Charizard done or um, the bear. Or maybe that was a video before last night. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful, sunshiny day. We thank you for all the things that you're doing in both of our lives. And we thank you for all that you're going to do. Father, we ask that everybody that watches this video um, is able to get something from it. We pray that your words come out and not our own. That you just bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. He was feeling on my booty a little bit while he was praying. That's a lot. <laughs> it's okay, we murk. <laughs> What's up, beautiful people? Shell and Aaron. here at A Radical Relationship, back with another video where we are continuing to talk about relationships. So last week we talked about just what it looked like for us to date within the context of the fact that I had been previously divorced. So if you hadn't had a chance to check that out, go back and just hear a little bit more about what our PTSD looked like <laughs> for each of us, but also just how God moved so powerfully in making things a non-factor despite any fears or apprehensions that I had. And so this week, uh, we're going to continue in talking about relate our romantic relationships specifically. Um, and due to the fact that we dated and what could be considered a very quick time frame for some, um, wanted to just chat through like, man, what made us so confident to move forward? So we met each other in September ish of 2021. We were married October 2022. So with about a year after meeting each other, we were married. Crazy. So um yeah, let's just get right in. When you know you know. Ain't when no, you know, ain't no, you know. Ain't no reason to wait. Yes. So for me, I'll start. All right. For me, I had an experience that I had never had before, which is good. <laughs> and that when Aaron and I locked eyes, I just immediately knew. I had never experienced anything like that before. I would have told someone that like, mm, cool for you. Not really sure that I would think that that I would agree that that's a thing, you know, but I just wouldn't, I, ha I wouldn't have been the person to even expect something like that for myself because I'm just so practical wow. and when I say when our eyes locked I literally mean when our eyes locked like not when he introduced himself not when I heard his name and like he had I didn't even know his name yet he the literally just line. turned around in the food truck line to see who his friend was talking to and when our eyes met something in me was just like that's him that's, he was that's the, the one to introduce us. Yeah, I, that's the only way that I can explain it. That something in me just said, that's him. Now, it had been prophesied to me before through family um, that my future husband was going to be a white man. So I had that in the back of my mind. I didn't want to hold on to it too tightly because, you know, you got to test that thing out. I ain't taking any word that is not directly from God as law. So I did have that in the back of my mind and I did feel strongly that it would be true, but not to the point that like I was only going to date white men. I had never even dated a white man before in my life. And so <laughs> clearly it, it wasn't a me thing to like be projecting, oh, this is what I think is going to happen. So... It was outside of the norm so much so for this to be the way that it happened for me because it wasn't my character. I hadn't even dated a white man before that I just knew there would be no way that it could be me saying this is him. Now with that though, even though I felt strongly from day one, there was still a mindset about me that was like, but I'm going to continue to let this play out. 
And the reason that that was really important for me this second time around is because when I had been married previously, people knew that we had dated for, I think, nine months before we got engaged. And one of the reasons that I like to highlight our time frame is because I dated pretty much just as quickly this second time around. And so people would ask me, do you feel like it was too soon? And I would say, no, I don't feel like it was too soon in the con context of time, but I do feel like it was too soon in the context of our relationship because I ignored things I shouldn't have ignored, things that I probably should have given more time and more weight to before giving my yes to a proposal or bef before moving forward with marriage. So in the grand scheme of things, like. I don't think that time plays as big of a factor as people may feel, but for me, it was, oh, because I feel like this is it, I'm going to just keep moving forward as opposed to giving weight to things that should have weight to really inform that decision. I just kept moving forward because I felt like it was the right thing to do. So that was different for me this time around. Um, but of course, yeah, like... That's all of it. No, I think it was just the hair popping up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, you think I'm critical? I see it. Anyways. Um, so yeah, it, it worked out very similarly this second time around, but there were, for in my experience, things that were so very different for me. Hmm. So, Mr. Odom. I remember when you told me that. <clears throat> Now that we're married, I'm never allowed to shave my beard. <laughs> Facts. Ladies, I know you feel me. <laughs> if the Lord gonna bless me with a man with a beard, no shade to y'all who can't grow one. But if he gonna bless me with a man that can grow a beard, why would we like, why would we get rid of that? I mean, I just don't understand. <laughs> but yeah, so I know that you, so this is an interesting part of our story too, that uh, Aaron didn't have that like first love at first sight or I knew at first sight experience. So I mean, babe, what was it like for you? I definitely knew. I mean, I wouldn't say love at first sight, but it was just like, there's definitely something there. Um, yeah. And I remember my friends had having to kind of nudge me and push me um, to, you know, muster up the courage um, to really just like start talking to her. <laughs> But, um, and it, it was a slow process, but we got there eventually. I think towards November, I finally kind of asked her for her phone number, but I did it in such a way that, like, she didn't realize I was asking her for her phone number because <laughs> I didn't want to get turned down. Um, so I ended up messaging her, I think, through Instagram as soon as I got my phone. Um, and it was one of those things that, like, every single day, you know, I'd been praying for my wife the whole year before. Um, you know, while I was in Teen Challenge and uh, just like praying for the things that I wanted in her and just, you know, for God to present that opportunity and what he did um, for me to know. And every single day since after like me and her started dating, I prayed to God like, man, hey, if this is the one, like show me a sign. And I am not even lying. Every single day God showed out in just like weird little ways. Like, uh, whether, it, I mean, it might have just been some random person being like, oh, hey, uh, where's your wife at? Or just like little comments right. like that. And I'm like, okay, God, I see you. I see you. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like every day. Like, it was every time I prayed that prayer, he gave me confirmation. It was just like very um, in your face. So that was really cool. That yeah. was really assuring. And I feel like when we started dating, just like all all obstacles were removed i feel like what could have taken a long time he decided to just like boom boom mm, boom boom that's boom good. just like stack things up like dominoes and we were just knocking them down yeah i like that point because there were things that would have made us go okay well we need to hold off for this reason in our in the relationship not personal conflict but just like states of life like he was coming out of um teen challenge the addiction recovery program he decided to stay committed for a year after that um in staying committed there was only a certain amount of time that he could have a car he wasn't making no money there <laughs> so like it's like okay where am i even gonna get a ring 
basically. <laughs> That was so it's like, where am I going to get a ring? How am I going to provide? How are all these things going to come into place? And so we were, we were unified in that, like, this is going to be God's timeline, whether or not it's something that we want to see happen that way. So if God wants this to happen, we're going to need for him to make a way. And he did. And he did. Like him buying this gorgeous ring was a non-factor. Him being able to get a car was a non-factor. He actually had to leave his program early <laughs> due to the fact that he was getting married. So that just opened things up. And so literally we would just pray like, God, if it's your desire for us to move forward, like remove these things that would have us hold off so that we know that we're moving in your will and not our own. And that was a big indicator as well. Also, when it came to race, neither one of us had ever dated outside our race before. And so we didn't know what that uh, acclamation. I mean, I hadn't I dated never, a white man before. I he hadn't been a in a girl. serious relationship with a black girl. Yeah. He, he kind of played around with something out there. But <laughs> neither one of us had been in serious relationships outside of our race and had that person like intertwined in our family so we also didn't know what that acclimation process was going to look like and again we were committed to like whatever this needs to look like for this to be in god's will like we're gonna give it that time and even that was like a non-factor yeah, immediately I mean, even there was a couple times you know i remember he was having to he was like be go slow with me he was having to process through some things but, Here you go, back to talking about the process. She won't let it go. He talked about it the last no, but, but I think the cool thing. Hold up, let the world hey. know. Aaron was so patient with Shell and her processing. I was. Anyway, Joe. But it's definitely okay. So definitely seeing our purposes align. So I remember we talked about it in one of the past videos. Now on our second day, um, we talked about our vision for the future and they just lined up perfectly. Um, so that is one thing that was just great. Um, another was, <clears throat> this one brain dead. I feel like as soon as I start talking, you're going to be like, oh, wait, I got it. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, having the purposes aligned was huge. That was another one of the distinct factors for me because in my previous marriage. Oh, I remember. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Go ahead. You lost it again? That and I think the fact that we both. So when we first started dating, like when we went on the very first date, we both being Christians and we were both intentional, intentional dating. Like we were both only, you know, dating with the pur sole purpose of, um, Wanted to get married. I mean, I feel like uh, I heard someone once say that he tell his kids, you know, we don't play divorce in this family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in other words, like, if you're going to date, you, you date with the intent to get married. You know, and I told myself, like, hey, you know, on the first date or the first within the first three dates, you know, if I can't see myself um, marrying her, then I don't need to be dating her. But that definitely wasn't the case because, you know, I was... Head over heels. I was looking for my phone earlier because I have it, all the dates. Like, oh, yeah. First day we met. First date. First day um, I said I love you. First, you know, the day I asked you to be my girlfriend. The day we got engaged. Like, I have all, yeah. all of those. Yeah, and back to his point about dating intentionally, we did a video on boundaries and dating. So if that is a topic that you're interested in and how to successfully, successfully date, um, putting in boundaries that are, are going to help you all succeed. Go back and check out that video. But what I was saying about the purposes being aligned thing is that in my previous marriage, I really had a desire to do ministry full time. Um, not knowing exactly what that looked like, but I knew that like my call was to ministry. His was like, I want to serve the church, but not necessarily do ministry full time. And in my mind, something said, OK, fine. If that's what God is giving you to do, then I'll just, you know, get behind that. But no, like it should have been a red flag that, OK, we don't have the same vision from God for our lives. I thought it, it was a matter of submission. Come but the reality, no, in that oh, situation, I thought. What situation? I just said that he didn't want to do full time ministry. Oh, between you and your ex? Yeah. Oh, I'm about to say. <laughs> I was like, 
he clearly ain't listening but yeah so instead of me realizing or taking that to me like okay god hasn't spoken to us in the same way about the future so red flag i thought that it was a matter of submission and it wasn't because i i had heard from god about what he wanted for my future so it would only make sense that like when my husband comes along he is going to have a very similar vision if it's one that i've truly heard from god concerning so that was big too. The other thing that I was going to say along the lines of specificity is that I had prayed for a man that could really lead me spiritually. And I remember one distinct Sunday, funny how it all works out, Aaron didn't have a car at this point. And so this Sunday I was picking him up for us to go to church and I had been praying some specific prayers. That's, that day was like an emotional day for, I don't even remember what was going on. Probably wouldn't tell y'all if I did. Something was going on that day and I was emotional. And um, we went to church that day and I don't even know if we were dating. We had to be because I was picking you up. Um, but we went to the altar at church that day and it was the first time that I heard him speak in tongues. And he was like praying over me speaking in tongues. And it was just such a specific answer to prayer that it was just another confirmation for me that like this is truly the man that I've been praying for. I remember like when I was on this journey of joining this new church that like getting back in touch with the spiritual gifts uh, was something that I was really passionate about and really looking for in the next level of my relationship with God. And so here comes along this man that has already been gifted in a way that I'm looking to attain <laughs> and to grow in. And so I'm like, man, he can help lead me. Um, and that was so much more top of mind for me than mm -hmm. secular or worldly standards of like having this kind of job, making this much money, driving this kind of car, having this kind of success. Like, no, if you can lead me spiritually, if you can lead me to Jesus, if you can be a strong man of God, that's that's what's going to last. Mm -hmm. Everything else, if this is meant to be, we can figure out if this is meant to be. <laughs> I want to put a heavy emphasis on that because I don't need no women out here taking care of no men. And that wasn't the case for us. Like I saw even with not having a job like his will and I knew his mindset and the circumstance surrounding not having a job or I the mean, job situation. Even being a successful, you know, independent woman, you still, you know, you gotta have that strong backbone. Period. Your man. I don't, I don't, I don't, pro I don't proclaim to be independent no more. I'm just saying <laughs> that, that encouragement and like that, you know, ability yeah. to like keep pushing you and like keep you believing in yourself. Because a lot of people think like, oh, I gotta be the man, you know, I gotta make all the money, I have to make all the decisions, I have to do all these things. But I think you hit the nail on the head, leading the house spiritually. But also, like, being an encouragement, you know, lifting up, continuing to motivate and push forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was something else that I was about to say. Mm. You're sharing the brain fog today. <laughs> right. Man, I feel like it was right at the tip of my tongue. I can't remember, but something else that I will. Oh, say. I will. Okay, I got something. So I remember before I even met Shell, the same my my same brother um, that introduced us. He was sitting in line with us. That introduced us. He had told me like a month before. He was like, "Aaron, you're gonna marry a black girl." Mm -hmm. Like, and he he spoke this over me multiple times, and I just didn't think nothing of it, you know. And I was like. Well, bro, it <laughs> come to pass. Mm, right. <laughs> like, it happened like real. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was the other thing that I was going to say. When it came to um, this relationship as well, um, honoring, honoring personal boundaries, being able to be vulnerable, transparent, and authentic, and have the other person accept that was important. Like Aaron talks about my processing. Like he was willing to be patient with me through that. Things about his past mm -hmm. that, you know, weren't ideal. I think the reason I was able to be patient with you so much was because the, one of the healthiest thing about our relationship was that we both chose to put God first. Mm -hmm. So I was patient because I knew that she was seeking God. Um, and same for me. You know, I was seeking God wholeheartedly. Like, we didn't put each other in front of God because we knew that God was the one that brought us to one another. And as long as we continue to seek God wholeheartedly, 
as individuals, mm -hmm. then there's it's like the the triangle triangle effect. You know, here's you God, God, here's her, here's me. And the closer that we see God, the closer we become as one. And I think that was probably like that's that's that was the key because it had us not put God first, like it would have been a yeah. road. Yeah, so that's what I was saying is that like us being able to be super authentic in who we were, have that person truly see us for who we were and say, you know, mm -hmm. this is something, someone that I'm, I'm willing to build with. This is someone that I'm willing to work through those Speaking things Speaking of authenticity, with. the very first day I met Shell, and this was crazy because she was the very first, like it's just so surreal. She was the very <clears> first person outside of Team Challenge that in the real world that I was able to share my testimony with. with. And I just remember, you know, typical show. She's, she's great at asking questions. Uh, I was just like, and I was just laying it all out on her. Because yeah. I, I wasn't expecting anything. You know, I was in a program. I wasn't expecting a relationship. I wasn't expecting anything out of it. So I was just like, look, I'm, I was on fire for God. I was like, I'm just going to lay it all on out there. <laughs> and the fact that it didn't scare her away Mm -hmm. um it was definitely encouragement yeah. if anything you you were like more intrigued like ooh, tell me more yeah tell i was more, more curious yeah for sure so that was just so huge for both of us um me being a me me coming out of a divorce him coming out of the lifestyle that he was coming out of like it was just so important for us to be able to be authentic and for the person to know everything that came with us and who we were as this new person for him like listen i need you to know what's gonna come with me if you're choosing to date me he was intentional about being upfront about like i need you to know xyz about my core problems my financial problems my not having a car my, me having a curfew um but it was and me not being able to like you know really not having any money <laughs> essentially yeah. but like it's so crazy because those are the things that God, like I said, the obstacles that he just kept knocking down one after another. And eventually it got to the point that I was walking into this marriage with zero baggage. Like, Yeah, the and, other thing that stands out to me about that is like the very things that were um, kind of hindrances on his end were, were the very things that God was also using to develop um, my character and continue to grant me repentance. So the ways in which I was wrong in my marriage and like the mindsets that I had that didn't align with God's word and weren't biblical for a wife or weren't going to sustain a marriage he was teaching me through Aaron which was just all about sacrifice and not having everything having to be my way and not um idolizing the idea of what marriage is about without actually being able to put in the work like there were so many things about my ways and my old marriage that, that was like it's not supposed to be this way because we're Christian and it was like that nobody said that it excluded me from things but that's what i projected like get your stuff together because that's not how it's supposed to be with him it wasn't none of that it was okay if this is what comes with you and we're gonna be together then we have to figure this out yeah, i remember you uh, she helped me get my first car yeah that was fun uh, i was trying to get i was trying to get something in like i was Aaron trying to get this busted Look, car. I got some money to get a vehicle. He had so, the right heart. But I was going to like get a car and use some of that towards her wedding ring. And Joe was like, nah, he ain't getting no busted car. Like we're just, so we, I ended up just we spending elevate, all the hey, car. Hey, and then God still showed up and still, you know, showed out with, even with the ring. So it was, that was encouraging too. All right. Yeah. That was fun. We like took a day to go look at cars. And it stuff. didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> buy, That's all right. What do we That's buy? All right. We bought the car in May. I had it for <laughs> five months. But anyways, without going backwards, it was nice to for me to be able to see like the joy and everything on his face because I just felt like. I don't know. It was really important for me, for him to see himself in a new light, especially knowing where he came from. I'm like, man, I, I want him to I want to be able to encourage him in such a way, even just as my brother in Christ, that he just f sees himself differently and not as the man that he was. So I would try to be intentional in ways that I encourage him in our dating relationship, even before we started dating, like the graduation. I'm my graduation. Graduation. She buy me a present. 
Yeah, like, but then outside of that, like in decisions like getting the car, when he's like, oh, I'm gonna just get this, I'm like, no, nah, you you better than that. And not in a like nah, elitist kind of more, way. He was more like, uh, if you don't, I'm not gonna be riding. Okay, it. that too. Like, nah, babe, we I ain't riding that. <laughs> but also, like, he did. It didn't have to be that way. He was just like. He was trying to make it all work, which I appreciated, but I'm like, I will wait on the ring <laughs> if I can ride around in something better than that. And it all worked out. Praise Jesus, go around Louis. Can Praise I name Jesus, it? Go around <laughs> the other uh, resource that I wanted to share with you all was um, I also did a video on uh, why did my marriage fail. So go back and check out that video for just more insight that I had retrospect into like, okay, what actually went wrong? And that should give you all some good tips for um, healthy, successful relationships in the future as well. So to wrap up coaching moment. Coaching moment. If we were talking to someone about uh, trying to figure out if a person was the one, I wrote down the question, uh, do you know what you're looking for in a spouse? A lot of the times we feel like we're going to stumble upon it and be like, oh, look what happened here. But I wrote down, make a list of non-negotiables and negotiables. So have your list of like, he absolutely has to check these boxes for valid reasons like starting with biblical reasons yeah, that's good I, I did that i took that advice yeah i mean it wasn't my advice he, he did mean, it yeah. from like the a different um bible study that he was in and then make a list of your negotiables because like aaron just say from a physical appearance standpoint he was everything that i would have wanted but i wasn't gonna be looking for it in a white man but when i met him that was negotiable you know like it didn't have to be a black or brown man he could be a white man and it'd be fine. He you told know? me the other day that you and your friends, you told your friends that you was going to marry a white man with tattoos. Yep. And she <laughs> Again, but it was just one of those things that like I wasn't holding tightly to. So yeah, that's just an example of like negotiables and non-negotiables. Like there are going to be things that you would like to have in a man um, or in a woman. And then there are going to be things that like this has to be an area that they're at or I have to see them going after this. And then just pray over those things and make yourself accessible. When we met, I can say that I wasn't looking, you know, like I wasn't intentionally making myself accessible. That's but, what happens. It, yeah, but for me, it's just least, always been like... It's like when you lease when it, you're, when you're on not the path. looking, when you're not seeking, that's when it like it pops up. Yeah, and I had just joined this new church that I did feel like God led me to. So I do think that there's something about like, hey, if you're just aligned with God's good and perfect will for you in that season, expect that everything else is going to come with that. I looked at that verse this morning in my quiet time, Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will align. So like... Just be sure that you're aligned in your season with God and then everything that's supposed to come with that season is going to come. And that that's yeah. what our story was, even when we least expected it. So to add to that, um, somebody described it to me this way. They said, you know, when you're running your race wholeheartedly, um, seeking God head first and you're running that race, you're just going to look over one day and you're going to see your wife. She's mm -hmm. gonna be, and she's going to be doing the same thing. You know, you both are just going to be running your race wholeheartedly, both, you know, headstrong, seeking the Lord. And you're just going to turn over and it's like, oh, that's her. Yes, it's seeing you here. That's her. And, yes. that, and that's exactly how it was. Like, it, such a blessing, like such a God thing. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I, I never would have experienced, I never would have thought that would have happened the way it happened and how quick it happened and just like, Yes, it was just definitely a God thing, but his assurance through the whole process as well was like very, very encouraging. Mm -hmm. For sure. So hopefully that helped you all. We just wanted to provide a little insight into what our ex experience was like and just the how can you know for sure, especially just coming from my background and getting remarried and doing things differently. Um, so hopefully that helped. Hopefully there's something in there that you can take away. Spend time with God, um, just journaling through, reflecting on anything that stood out, praying through parts of your heart that may have been pricked by something that we said and just just be aligned with God in your season and expect that the rest will come. I think another thing we didn't talk about was just like, just 
how naturally it happened. Um, when it's a God thing, you know, it should happen naturally. You shouldn't be having to force it. Um, you shouldn't be having to put a square in a circle hole, you know. Um, I think, like, with us meeting each other's families and just co through conversation, like, everything was just, it just, it seemed so right. Um, mm -hmm. Even, like, when we were talking on the phone. I remember I told you I hate talking on the phone. I don't want to be talking on the phone. <laughs> And, you know, two hours later, I'm like, what was right? that you said about not wanting to talk on the phone for long? I feel like he would give a caveat, like, you know, it got like 30 minutes. I'm like, mm-hmm, when I get done asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then he would make that comment like, dang, yeah. I didn't think I would enjoy this so much. I, I didn't. I mean, Period. everything's just been Period. very comfortable <laughs> with you. For sure. All right, y'all. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Until next time, we are out. Bye, y'all.